It was a warm afternoon in June 2016. I was inside the worst maximum security prison of men in Kenya. I was doing a mindful leaders training in a prison that the year before they said it was not fit even for animals. I was standing in the middle of a circle of men and next to me there was a table upside down. At one point, I asked them a question. Are you willing to make the world a better place? They answered, yes. Can I still hear it in my ears? This program started a year earlier in the largest maximum security prison of men, in which inmates were transforming themselves into mindful leaders. They were leading internal change and external change around the prison and beyond. I'm Dr. Immaculada Darves Giorno. You can call me Inma. And for the last decade or so, I've been investigating and I've been developing change agents, individuals who are willing to lead change within themselves and around them. And one of the things that I discovered is that there are some resources that they can really utilize to be successful. And those resources are mindfulness at the individual level and at the group level, they need to tap into the power of social identities. But what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is about being here fully in the present, unconditionally, without judgment. And what is social identity? Let me tell you, our sense of self is composed on our personal identity, me, Inma, and as many social identities as groups that we belong to, that they are important and meaningful for us. And those groups not only give us a sense of belongingness, but also their values and their norms share and shape our perceptions and our behaviors. So when leading internal change, when leading personal change, I found that these two are really important. When leading personal change, the mindfulness, called mindfulness plus, mindfulness plus self-leadership, are really going to shape the way in which we want to go and are really going to allow us to do what is needed internally. And in terms of social identity, that social identity is going to make meaningful the type of actions and behaviors and the type of perceptions and communications that we take. Precisely, in this largest maximum security prison, we conducted two studies in which we wanted to look, we wanted to explore at what is the predictive, the predictive value, the predictive power of mindfulness and of identification with mindful leaders. And we have three outcomes, well-being, resilience and consumption of substances of alcohol and other drugs. And what we saw, what the results are telling us, is that mindfulness and identification with the mindful group are both strong predictors of both mental well-being and resilience. But when we are looking at what happens with uh, the use of substances, consuming drugs and alcohol, what happens there? Mindfulness becomes less important in that context than identification with the mindful leader's identity. Because when they are mindful leader, using substances is something that is completely incongruent. So that's about leading personal change. What about leading external change? When we are leading external change, we are going to face rejection, resistance and challenges what we call wonderful challenges. And in those cases, 
we need resources to really build us up. We need to have enough psychological, psychological capacity to deal with that. And for that, mindfulness and other resources are really important. But also, when we are trying to lead change, external change, I may try to convince you to follow me. I may try to, to convince you to really uh, start changing your behavior. When I'm doing that, when I'm trying to convince you, if I'm a complete outgroup member, you may be more likely to dismiss my message. Let me give you an example to illustrate this. My students were running a project that was called Girls Do Lift. They wanted to encourage women to do weightlifting at the university. The first meeting, they met the manager and they said, hey, this is the project, absolutely fantastic, can you help us? The manager dismissed them. There were students that did not belong to the same social identity. Two days later, one of the women were lifting weights there. And when the manager, who is also a weightlifter, saw her, they started talking. This time, they were sharing the same social identity. And as such, they started influencing each other. And the project was a huge success. So from failure, we went to success in this particular change project. And this is precisely what meant that what happened in the prisons in Kenya was an absolute success. So what we have there is that everyone in the, in, for instance, in Naivasha, in the largest prison, the guards, the inmates, the governor, they all belong to the same social identity, the mindful leader's identity. I belong to that identity too. The director of the whole rehabilitation of Kenya belongs to that identity. And as such, there were lots of activities, lots of initiatives that could take place. But also, these individuals were working on their mindfulness. So when challenges, but there were many, when challenges were coming their way, they could confront them. And interestingly, these individuals were doing it in their own way. Some of them were doing theater, from blindfulness to mindfulness. Some of them were writing poets, poetry. Some of them were uh, writing songs. Each of them, some of them were preparing materials, translating it into other languages. Each of them were offering what they have within them. And this is also why the change projects here at the university have been so, um, well, some of them more successful than others. But this is why, this is one of the things. So one of the things that they have in common with the change projects at the university is precisely that. We have created an identity of change agents. We support each other. Some of them are developing more their mindfulness than others. And like in the example before, when they utilize the full power of social identities, the projects become really, really successful. So, today, today is the first day of the rest of our lives. What are we going to do with it? Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. What are we going to do with it? I invite each of us to lead our lives, to lead change within, and I invite us to lead change around us, in our families, in our communities, in our institutions, in our organizations. Join the adventure. Thank you.